Hey guys, this is John, and I have to correct this ship, right this ship, get back on my winning path. And it looks like we're going to get a Dutch Leningrad. I'm going to play a Fianchetto line. And my opponent is playing Knight C3, Kidok. I'll go here. Or my opponent's playing Knight E4. I said the move that I wanted to play, Knight C3. Now he goes E5. I can take on e5. Let's do that. Taking on e5 seems simple. I bet he takes on c3. In between move. Yep. And probably takes with the pawn. Yep. Let's play queen c2 now. Just intending to put a rook on d1. Hmm. Maybe set up a battery. I think this is a nice battery for me. Maybe now e4. This e4 move is um, a good one in the Dutch if you're able to play it. Because it tends to reduce black's options with his pawns. So let's just take... You know, I might just trade rooks and then play um, rook e1. That's what I'm thinking. Seeing as how he can't play e4 because I take on g7. He'll probably play rook e8. But maybe now b4. No, b4 hangs his pawn. But it still might be a valid move. Yeah, you know, I like b4. If he takes that pawn, big deal. I get b5 in. And I think winning e5 is way more important than losing c4. We'll find out, but that's my impression. Also, his knight doesn't have a lot of good squares. It's got to go to d8 or b8. Can't go to d4 because of the pin. I just take. So the next big decision will be which way I capture on e5. My instincts say knight takes, but bishop takes is, um, is tempting too. No, I think knight takes would be better. Because then I actually attack this bishop with tempo. This is a nasty position for him. Queen c5. Okay, so if I take here, yeah, I would lose my uh, queen because if rook takes e1. So that's his idea. Uh, what to do then? Bishop d4. Bishop d4 he can take on e5. Maybe. Maybe not. Bishop d4 he can take on b5. Ah, but I think I see something in that case. Bishop d4, queen takes b5, swap the queens, bishop d5 check. Where does that get me? Maybe not much of anywhere. Okay, I'm just... Hmm. This is just an annoying decision. It's a big decision. I could simply play something like a4, but he might go knight f7 soon. So I really feel like I should address that problem. Huh. Bishop d4, trade, trade, check on d5. Just don't see a win in that case. Okay, I'm going to play rook d1. I don't like this pin that I'm in. I'm trying to attack the knight on d8. Thing is, I'm still not sure if he takes on uh, b5 with the queen right now. He takes there, okay. Maybe he's just going to take on e5 with the queen, and we're going to trade and go into an endgame. It's very possible. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Check. Now I should probably take this guy. Yeah, I feel like I botched that somehow. I didn't get as much as I wanted to. 
I am up a pawn, so I should be thankful for that. But it feels like it was botched. Actually, I'm not even up a pawn because he just took it. <laughs> I was up a pawn until he played bishop takes b5. So in this end game, I gotta watch out for his c pawn. We both have like several weak pawns though. Well, I have this weak a pawn, that's about it. He has some scattered weaknesses. Why is he giving me a pawn for free? Guess I'll take it. Does double my pawns up, but hey, free pawn. <laughs> Not gonna look a gift pawn in the mouth. Rookie two seems to make sense. Doesn't go for it. Is he trying to trade bishops? Maybe. Yeah, he probably is. Hmm. Just bring this bishop back. He offered a draw. I don't really want to draw. Problem is bishop c6 is pretty good. Yeah, just get to an ending. Let's do this, though. I want to see what he does. If he takes, I'm happy with that. Just next move, I'm going to go king g3. If he really wants to trade, he's got to help me. He's got to help me straighten out my pawns. So I'm looking at a line like bishop takes bishop, f takes e4, rook c2 check. Uh, he does that. That's interesting. I can just take here, right? Yeah, but then he wins f4. Okay, fine. I give in. Draw? No. Check. I don't want to draw yet. Not sure why he felt the need to offer two draws in a row, but <laughs> I mean, he's definitely worse in this ending. Um, I can go win this pawn. I'll do Check. that. Because now I can do this. Go over and win this guy. I gotta be a little bit worried about the C pawn, but you know, I'm gonna win his A pawn, and I don't think his king can participate so easily. Check. At least not yet. Um, let's just get behind the pawn. He's gonna be annoying. Go over and win some more stuff. Check. So now I've got these nice Check. pawns over here. They're not connected, so that's kind of that's kind of a drag. But let's just start advancing them. Check. Check. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just start advancing these guys. Got to be careful now. Yeah, I got to be a little careful. Time warning. Ah, uh, man. Okay, I'll just go here. He's going to play it safe, I think. No, maybe not. Okay, now it's anybody's game. Check. Pawns are not connected, but still. Pretty fast with these. I don't think he can cope with both these pawns. Check. Yeah, I think I'm winning. I do believe I'm winning. I'm definitely winning now. Just do that. 
Check. Thing is, can I win his rook in time? Check. 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 It's doubtful. Let's see. Oh, too soon. You did it too soon, buddy. Check. Almost still made him. Checkmate. <laughs> Yeah, he played Rook H6. He went for the Desperado uh, move or two early. Because once I take that Rook, it's just easy to checkmate. So, okay, let's take a look at this one. <clears throat> so he chose an unusual move order to get into a Dutch. Knight F3, G6. And we reached the mainline position of the Leningrad variation which sees black playing d6 and often trying to arrange e5. You know, the main move is knight c3, but I often try to double fianchetto against the Dutch because I feel like it frustrates Dutch players to have my bishop opposing their dark square bishop. So that's what I was going for with this. Knight bd2 is also possible in this position. But I did this, and we traded. Yeah, it's important for him to take on c3 because if he takes on e5... I have nice stuff like, let's say, queen takes queen, rook takes, knight takes e4, pawn takes, and then like knight g5. And this pawn is a goner. White's going to get great play. Maybe he has something like this, but it looks suspicious for black. Some continuation like this. White seems to be more active and enjoys the better position. So um, he played... The good in-between move, knight takes c3, bishop takes c3, and takes. I could swap queens and play e4, but um, somehow keeping the tension like this seemed better. And then queen b2. I think this is a nice plan. I like this plan a lot. Now e4. Maybe I could have played the immediate b4. I wonder if that's even better. Because technically I don't really need e4 if I'm going to do this plan, because he still can't play e4 himself. If he does that, the bishop just hangs. So maybe b4 was a timely idea even right now before one of his rooks comes to the center. And the threat of b5 is significant. And if he does this, this is very similar. I guess the difference is he can do this in this case. There's no pin on the e file. But I got to believe that like continuation like that would still be good. Oh, this pawn might hang. Probably not, though. If this, I have check. Like, bishop d5 check must be good. If he takes my bishop, I take his queen and win. Otherwise, he has to step into like check. you know something like that. <laughs> Game over. So I wonder if um if I could do that right now. Let's check the the engine. Engine really likes knight e1. Not a move I consider. The idea of going to d3 and also making bishop take c6 possible gives a large advantage to white. It's not a big fan of e4. What about b4? b4, a6. Okay, so in that case, if I do this, my a2 pawn would be in trouble. I could play a4, right? But I guess take, uh-huh. And if this happens, the rook gets into a2 anyways and causes disruptions. Hmm, knight e1. Knight e1's a nice move. I do like that. And it's giving a line where I play knight d3 and then pawn f4. All hands on deck to attack e5. I do like that line. Well, as played, e4 here, it suggests you just take the pawn. If he took, I was going to go here. He gets d4, though, and says that black has reasonable counterplay. That knight is a pretty powerful piece. I'll give him that. It probably makes up for the fact that he has the isolated pawn. Yeah, it looks kind of balanced here. So he does instead the rook move. I take on f5. Trade. Rook e1. Mm -hmm. I was proud of this b4 idea, but maybe it's not as good as I thought. 
Knight h4, it says, is more active, attacking the f5 pawn. b4. I thought for a long time in this position, and in fact, it looks like I made the wrong choice here. Bishop takes e5 was better. Yeah, I didn't do that because I thought it would um, be better to take with the knight in order to gain a tempo on the bishop. Moreover, I thought maybe this was an idea. And if take, then take here. Check. But I guess this is Check. completely fine for white. I escape the mate and I'll be up material. Okay. Yeah, it just looked dumb. It looked riskier to take with the bishop. Somehow knight takes e5 felt more natural. Ah, but in this case, he also has knight f7. That's a good observation by the engine. Yeah, because if I, if I take here, he takes on e1. Check. I take, he takes again. Check. And I'm just busted in this endgame. End game. Down in exchange for no compensation. Yep, definite error on my part. Bishop takes e5 much stronger. So if he had played knight f7, I would have had to play f4 to support the knight. What about when I take and he goes queen c5? Rook e3 is a good move. Okay. In order to support or in order to threaten knight take c4. Because my whole problem here is if I take on c4 right now, he has rook Check. takes e1. Again, this bishop was overloaded. So rook d1 I played. He took, I took. What happens if he takes on b5, by the way? If he takes with the... Actually, I think I was looking at bishop takes. I have queen b3 check. Check. This being a good move. King h8, rook d5, picking up the bishop. Yeah, that's very convincing. So it seems like his decision to go to the endgame was a smart one. Check. So the psychology of this endgame, I mean... I had a feeling it was a draw once I came to my senses and realized it was actually even material and I was not up upon. But even with the time differential, I just got the sense like he was kind of begging for a draw. He offered two draws around here and he didn't really handle this position too, um, too calmly. I mean, the move f4 to me, it seems like when he plays that, he's almost like trying to force a draw rather than just letting the position play out and making good moves. He seems uncomfortable with the prospect of uh, potentially defending, and he seemed uncom uncomfortable with the fact that he has all these weak pawns. Now, granted, his C pawn is a real asset, so that's what I thought he should advance it. You see, that's the number one computer move, too. He just left it on C7. So, I mean, even OTB, I wouldn't take a draw if this was the rating differential. No way. Okay, good. F3 was a, was a strong move by me. The whole point is that if he really wants to exchange these bishops and try to get to a rook end game, because rook end games um, tend to be drawish even with an extra pawn sometimes, that he has to repair my structure in the process. And I was thinking check. that after check and king up and takes, I'd be able check. to check here. I win that pawn. That's probably what I'll take next. Let's say king g6 and take. Yeah, and my two connected passers should guarantee the win against his a pawn. I think this is just a win. So... You know, it's not easy for him after f3. It's really not. That was probably a good try. It got me to take him. Check. And I checked here and hid my king. But I feel I misplayed this because, um... Check. I don't know, maybe maybe his king just gets too active. Check. Assisting his pawn. I thought this would be an easier task for me because I'm definitely playing for the win. But... Check. Yeah, I didn't handle it in the best way. He did play this phase of the endgame pretty well. Check. He made good use of his trumps. Check. Or his trump. His only trump is his c-pawn. <laughs> well, his c-pawn and his king activity. And at all times, I have to be cautious not to um, allow him to block on the c-file with his rook and catch me off guard and catch me when I uh, am not able to stop his c-pawn. Okay, so here I guess I should have played f5. Now I found in these end games when you have a cluster of pawns and you're in like a race situation, they have a, a pass pawn on the other wing, you have pass pawns over there, and it's clear that you guys are gonna get into a pawn pushing race. 
I found that it's good to advance your pawns in tandem. And since this was like an outside pawn as well, I thought, well, you know, I should definitely play h4. He has a hard time getting to that pawn. But I guess in this case, f5 might be better simply because that pawn is already on the fourth rank or now fifth rank. And it's more difficult for him to stop. Yeah, that probably was just an improvement. I did this. This might throw it away. Check. Because you see, you guys see my dilemma. Like now, rook c4 is an idea for him. So. Check. Here, rook a5 was a nice move. Yep. Now, if I push the pawn again, I just lose after c2. I'm busted. Check. Here, you can block. And even I saw a line Check. like this. Even if I get a queen, he has queen g1. Check. I step to the h file Check. and he just picks up the queen. I looked at that line briefly. Not in this exact position, but in a similar position, I think. So rook a5 was really nice. Yeah, and he just couldn't figure out the complications. Maybe he should take on... Oh, no. Okay, if he took on h5, I can take here. That's right. So he couldn't do that. That would be losing a losing endgame for him. Check. Wow, even here, maybe I'm just winning. Uh-huh. h6 was no good. King d3 could draw for him. If here, rook a8. f5, king here, king here. Rook h8. Let's say king g6 here, f6, and take. Okay. So it seems like he can barely draw. He might have some tricky drawing tries. Again, I should have moved the f-pawn. Why is that the case? Why is f5 that much better? f5, let's say he comes back with his king. f6, let's say king comes back again. f7, rook a8 forced. King f5, aha. They call this shouldering. So I'm shoving his king out of the way with my king. It's like, you know, at school when uh, you see the shrimpy kid walking down the hallway and the jock like is walking the opposite direction. The jock like shoves him into the into the lockers. <laughs> that probably happens mostly in movies, but that's that's what shouldering is. So this king, this white king is bullying black's king, stopping him from coming to the e5 square. That's a very good point because... um. You know, if I were to advance the h-pawn first, like I did in the game, like this, there's less shouldering chances. King here, king here, or pawn there, sorry. Rook here, here, here. Now, I could go king f5, I guess, but he can, like, check me or go rook h8, maybe? So, like, here, I'm not stopping his king. I'm not making his king um, have a tough time getting back. Whereas in that other line, I was. He couldn't get to the e5 square. Hmm. So I shouldn't have just blindly pushed my outside pawn. I really should have focused on my f pawn. Check. And now, okay, so rook g1 looks like he threw it away. Yeah, it's super important to get back with your king in these positions. So he needed to do that and then set up rook g1 check. It's just critical that you do that. You have to coordinate your king and rook if you want to stop these pawns. And he gave a check. check. Now I was able to shoulder him, king f5. Now he's busted. He can't stop the advance of the pawns. He could bring his rook down to the 8th rank. But I push, and my king is going to come up and get in here. Yeah, assist f8. Notice that like when I advance my king now, I could do it in a way that also stops his king from coming back once again. He can't get to e5. And his rook alone is not going to be able to help defend both of these pawns. So, instructive race situation. Check. And if you play a lot of chess, you'll be on the side with the rook many times, and you'll be on the side with the pawns many times. This is like a customary race position. I had a game like very similar to this in a tournament in Iowa in April where I had the king and rook, and my opponent had the king and pawns. And he had like one way to draw, and he missed it. He advanced his, um, I think it was his king. He put his king on the wrong square, and I was able to coordinate my king and rook in defense, came back and stopped the pawns and won. So they're very concrete situations. So remember shouldering and really rushing your king back if you're the defending side. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed that game. I'm going to play one more today. So talk to you guys later. Bye.